Hello, Bobby Torres of Freightbox Recording here. And if you're looking to attract clients to your studio, whether you're doing this as a side hustle or you're looking to do it for full-time living, this is the video for you. Now, this is actually an excerpt taken from a live training that I did with members of the Freightbox Mix Crypt. Uh, so if you're interested in watching the entire hour and a half long training, there's a link below in this video's description. Again, this is sort of a snapshot or a snippet of what I feel is the best approach if you're looking to attract new clients to your studio, or maybe you don't have any clients to work with yet. So uh, again, enjoy. And if you have any questions at all, leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'd love to hear your questions. Let's get started. How do you supercharge this, right? How, let's say you don't have any clients yet. Let's say um, the only clients that are hitting you up are bad, <laughs> okay? I still get hit up by bad clients all the time. What do you do? Does anybody have any ideas? Throw out some ideas before I tell you the, 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 the way that has worked great for me and I think will work great for pretty much anyone. How do you attract these clients if you're not getting them? How? Do you wait for God to deliver them to you? What do you do? Any ideas? Oh, Barry, hit the nail on the head. Ben is right too. Offer great value. Offer to do one song demo for a good look. You, got, you guys have been listening. Very good. Move to LA. <laughs> Let's use myself as an example here, okay? Let's go back to 2017. That's, again, I had my stuff together at this point. I was even doing work out of a bigger studio called North End, which is in my same building, okay? Um, I was happy. I, I was working with great clients like Matt that's in this group. Uh, a lot of my old time clients, a lot of repeat people, a lot of older, you know, a lot of just a lot of good stuff was happening, but there was something that was going on that I was not happy about at the time. A lot of the younger bands in my area, a lot of really, really good technical, crazy metal bands, I wasn't hearing anything from, to be honest. So we're talking at this time, I was already in my early 30s. I wasn't playing shows anymore. Um, I wasn't meeting younger people, really, uh, younger bands. But I would hear these young bands coming up and like they all had terrible production, like bad production. I'm like, why aren't they coming to me? Like, why aren't they hearing? Like, why aren't they hitting up Frightbox? What's what's wrong? Like, what what do I suck? Like, am I not like, like, am I just not cool? Like, what's the problem? And it hit me. They don't even know about me. How would they know about me? OK, like it's not like I, I wasn't really active on social media at the time. Um, this is before YouTube. I pretty much was known for the older hardcore and older metal bands, which is totally cool, but I wanted to work with some younger bands, right? So now what most people will do is they, they'll complain about it and do nothing about it, okay? And this, and I'm the, again, I'm the worst defender of this. I didn't take accountability. I didn't take the blame for anything. But at this point, I've said, okay, if I want to do something about this, I need to do something about this. There was a local band in my area, insane drumming, insane musicianship, really, really tight, um, but they had very bad sounding recordings. And I'm, okay, I remember how I found out about them. I, I did play one show, I filled in on guitar at a local show for one of my buddy's bands, and this band opened up and they blew my socks off. I was like, wow, these kids can rip, right? And they were old, they were kind of like, they felt like the band Death, they had like a Death kind of vibe. So what I decided to do was this, hit them up on Instagram. I'm like, hey guys, I really like you guys a lot. Um, I, I think I could add, I think I could, I think with my production and your songwriting and your, and your music, we could do something great, right? Hit them up. They didn't hit me back. Crickets. I wasn't taking no for an answer. I'm like, no, I'm working with this band. I don't care what the hell it takes. I'm working with this band. Went back and forth. And I'm like, did you check out my productions? Oh no, man, we didn't get a chance to check. I'm like, dude, just listen to my productions. Go to my website. It's nothing. Maybe it was the third or fourth time. I don't remember. Anyway, eventually the guitar player for some reason checked out my website and he heard a mix that I did for a band called Legionary. It was a cover of a death song called, I think, 10,000 Lies, 10,000 something. Um, and he loved it, right? And I told him this. I said, listen, I'll do a single for free. One single. Um, I said, we could do it in this amount of days. Um, we, um, I'll get it done by whatever, whatever it was. I came up with parameters. I didn't say, hey, I'll do an album for free. I didn't say, hey, I, I'll do an EP for free because I had enough business sense at the time that you can't, you can't let someone take advantage of you. Again, I didn't know these guys that well as people. They could have been complete, you know, schmucks for all I knew. I got a good vibe when I saw them at the show. But like, so what ended up happening was this. I did the single. I did everything I mentioned previously in this training. I uh, edited the drums, talked about what they wanted the mix to sound like. 
got the single done on time, picked sick guitar tones with them, and they absolutely loved it. I, this is not an exaggeration. Out of that one single, right, the band ended up, I think the band broke up, right? So I didn't do anything more with the band, but it doesn't matter. The drummer in that band had two other bands. He went to me for both bands. So we had an EP with one band and a two song, uh, two song EP with another band just from the drummer. The guitar player, right, in that band I just told you guys about, uh, was, was joined another band, okay? And th these were paying clients that were not messing around. Like, they had bad experiences with old producer, you know, local producers that half-assed stuff, didn't edit, didn't do it, you know. So because of that one single I did for free, I've done seven songs with his other band, okay? He's in another band, and I just mixed this last past year. Ben recorded them, and I mixed an album. It was an album. No, I'm sorry. It was a five song. I think a five song EP. Out of that one free single, I've got a new, a brand new network that's separate from Matt, <laughs> my dear friend Matt. It's separate from my old client. A completely new scene that I didn't know any of these kids. They didn't know me. I I started a new branch in my client tree all by being very strategic. Okay, I picked this band because they had a following. They weren't big. Actually, they broke up like. A, a, a half a year after we did the single, but because I thought about, I intentionally picked that band, did a free single, I knew people would hear it, I knew that they all were good musicians, and it led to more work. So if you wanna supercharge your, um, if you wanna supercharge your client acquisition, do all of the things I've shared here, skip over all the dumb things I used to do, and you will do well, okay? Now again, it takes work, you have to be passionate about this, you, have, you can't half-ass things, I'm just gonna be completely honest with you. Whenever I've half-assed things in the past, it's led to nowhere. Whenever I've put into work and you know, added value to the client, it's exploded. It's as simple as that. It became less about interfaces and microphones and plugins, and it became more about the experience and meeting people, and honestly, you know, not to get you know, emotional here, but like some of my best friends now are because of being an engineer. Like, you know, when you spend time in the studio with bands, like you become friends with them after a while. So some of my best friends now are because of recording local bands. Anyone have anything to add or any questions before we wrap this uh, live training up? Yes, Lee, Lee says definitely thinking about setting up a simple website. Do this, okay? It's not about having a fancy website. It's not about having um flashy website it's all about you what what do you think about what you want to accomplish you want to show them what you could do so you have your services if you guys want to check out my website it's frightboxrecording.com you could hear i haven't even updated it because it's done so well as far as like conversions so i just leave it as it is actually i haven't even updated the mixes in like five years <laughs> five years uh ivan says i know of studios that you have to pay at least half down deposit and if you cancel you lose your money is this a normal thing absolutely do this is a normal thing 100 percent I've had people pay deposits and the band breaks up and I'm keeping that deposit. Think about it like this. If you do this for a business, as a, your business or your main source of income, if the band blocks out a month of your time, right? And they, and they, and they book four months beforehand and they break up, what are you going to do? Not make money for a month? Ask for last second clients? No. Yeah. So that, that is normal, dude. A hundred percent. Good question. That's what I do. Okay. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you'd like to see the entire training, it's an hour and a half long, so please only watch it if you're serious. Uh, again, there's a link below in this video's description. You could watch the entire training for absolutely free, and uh, enjoy. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. If you're interested in some Frightbox swag, I've got t-shirts, mugs, and a ton of other cool stuff on the way. There's a link below to the Frightbox merch store in this video's description. Until next time, happy recording.